welcome to Bridge to the Atlantic. We are your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm award-winning singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist, Marcin Valley, founder of electronic rock band Midnight Soundtrack, coming at you from my new basement studio today that is not set up, but it will be soon. This week, we're welcoming music business and social media coach Madeline Sklar to the show. Madeline has been running Go Girls Music, a unique organization that focuses on advancing the careers of independent female musicians for over 16 years and hosts the popular GG Chat on Twitter every Thursday. She's been named one of the 10 powerful women in music by Curve Magazine and is one of the 15 people you should know in the biz by IndieMusic.com. Most recently, Madeline launched the Twitter Smarter podcast, which features interviews from some of the top social media experts on how to use Twitter to its fullest potential. We're looking forward to hearing what tips Madeline has for musicians and creatives on what they should and shouldn't be doing on social media. So let's jump right in. Hey, Madeline. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. I love this podcast. I love what you guys do. Ah, thank, thank you. you. We always accept love on this show, don't we, Ross? Oh, yeah. We embrace it and we'll give it back. <laughs> We encourage it, we cultivate it, we all those great things. So, uh, Madeline, I've known you for a while. I've yes. known you ooh, probably about three years or so on Twitter. Um, so jump in and tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the coolest one first. I could be a, a cult leader because of Go Girls. You want to hear the story? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I started Go Girls, it was actually 19 years ago. Okay. I started it in 1996. I've been doing it for a long time because you mentioned 16 years. Um, long, long time. We're about to hit 20 years. And uh, when Go Girls turned 10 years old, uh, you know, for years, people were saying, you should get a Go Girls tattoo. And I'm like, well, and I'm a tattoo person. And that's like a whole other story, like what people don't know about me. I have 18 tattoos. Um, can't always tell from, from this kind of uh, video. Um, but uh, when we hit the 10-year mark, I decided that I wanted to get a Go Girls tattoo. And I wasn't sure when I was going to do it, where I was going to put it. And what happened was uh, my partner and I were driving to Austin for Folk Alliance, which is a really popular uh, music conference, great for musicians, for folk, but not just folk. I mean, that's kind of the misconception is for, you know, world and Celtic, bluegrass, a whole uh, variety of genres. So we were driving to Austin and I looked down at my ankle and I'm like, that's the spot I'm going to put it. I'm just going to get the, the logo and put it there. So we get to Austin. I have an insane schedule from the moment I'm there till, till the time we're leaving because we were showcasing the whole time. We had a booth. I was speaking on panels, doing workshops. It was insane. So um, one of the shows we were doing, they actually had it um, outside of the conference. So like the conference is normally at the hotel. Everything's at the hotel. They had this one particular show for us to do right outside the hotel on 6th Street in Austin, which is the really popular street where everything happens, all the bars and clubs, venues and stuff. And so we were loading up the Go Girl show. And wouldn't you know it, a tattoo shop was right next door. And I was like, okay have to do it here we go so i was setting up the show then i ran over to the tattoo studio and like told them what i wanted to do gave them my business card and said could you do this logo and they said sure so we're trying to get me set up and i had to go back i was like doing this back and forth between the tattoo shop and the venue trying to get set up finally get the tattoo done run back to introduce one of the bands on the show. I went back to the tattoo shop because one of the girls with me decided she was going to get the tattoo also. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I, very unexpected. I, I, I'm always wild when somebody has a Go Girls bumper sticker on their car. So now I have people that want to ink themselves. I'm like, just just no words can express that. So, uh, so she decides to get it. So I, I'm like there for her watching her get the tattoo. I had to again, run back next door, introduce the next band, come back over to the tattoo shop. Another girl with us decided she would get the tattoo as well. So there's now three of us walking out with the Go Girls tattoo. We all got it on our ankle, the same spot. We go back over to the venue. Now I'm introducing the big headlining act. And one of another one of our community members said, hey, I want to get one of those tattoos also. So when we're done with the show, we go 
back next door to the tattoo shop. So the fourth girl gets the, the logo tattooed. So there's now four of us. So the 10 year anniversary of Go Girls is marked by me and three other girls in the community getting the tattoo, but it doesn't stop there. Over the years, people got the tattoo. There are now 30 of us around oh, wow. the country, around the US, three of them are guys that have a, some form of a Go Girls tattoo. I allowed people to, you know, maybe change up and, and put an inst- a certain instrument on there or whatever. So there's been this joke over the years that I could be a cult leader because, you know, like who does that? Who goes out and gets a tattoo for an organization? So I thought it was like a pretty that. cool. I yeah. like that. Can, yeah, you really us, cool. can you tell us two more things about you that everyone should know? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have four Go Girls tattoos. Like, I just couldn't stop with one Go Girls tattoo. So, I ended up uh, doing more on me here. Um, so, I have a grand total of 18 tattoos. So, four of them being Go Girls tattoos. I'm not going to get any more Go Girls tattoos. Um, you know, a lot of people that follow me on Instagram know about my insane addiction to sweets, and I get joked and laughed at. I know Ross knows about it because you you follow yeah. me on on Instagram, and yeah, you know, I can't help it. I'll go to Trader Joe's, and there's the cookie butter, or there's the chocolate caramels, and then of course at Whole Foods when they got the whole aisle of like, uh, you know. 20,000 chocolate bars and it's like which one do I pick so I just buy them all yeah so that's another thing about me um what oh you know what I'm a former web designer you know a lot of people a lot of people don't know that about me I I was a web designer back in the early early days so when I started go girls in 1996 I also started my own web design company and most people had not heard of a dot com back then but a lot of people knew that they needed to have some type of website so I was one of the first web designers here in Houston where I live so I thought that was pretty cool I did that for about 11 years and uh, it was a lot of fun no so, kidding. That's yeah. pretty interesting. That, that's yeah. been the most thorough uh, three things about yourself that everyone should know answer yeah. I think we've ever gotten, eh, Ross? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. That's really cool. Um, and actually kind of leads us quite nicely into the, the first sort of big question that we've got. So uh, obviously you're the founder of Go Girls Music. Can you tell us maybe a little bit why you started it and why you think it's important that female musicians and musicians in general should support each other? Absolutely. Well, you know, it was started for several reasons. One of the biggest reasons is because I was getting ignored at the guitar shops here in Houston where I live. And so, you know, I'd go to the shop, play a guitar, and the salespeople would ignore me. And then um, at that time I was married and my then husband would come along with me and I'd be the one picking up the guitars, playing on them, and he would just be standing there, yet the salesperson would go to him time and time again and ask him, can I help you, sir? And he was just as frustrated with me. I mean, he would like go, uh, she's the one buying, not me. So you need to talk to her. So it was a big frustration. And so when the internet was really new in the early days, I thought this could be a great way to connect with other female musicians and find out are other people going through what I'm going through? Because it was just a curiosity. And so that was the very early beginnings of Go Girls Music to Find a way through a static website because, you know, back then there was, you know, you had a static page, you had email, and that was basically it. So I thought, well, I'll put a page out there asking questions, encouraging people to email, and then I'll post their answers on here. So that was the big reason for starting it. And it's just interesting that over the years, women still get mistreated at guitar shops they still get mistreated at shows i'm not a feminist i mean i didn't do this to be like oh female power you know um it it kind of evolved into that and people expect that from me but i just wanted to bring people together plain and simple i just wanted to find a way to bring people together so that we could have a forum for discussion and and also because with musicians you know we feel so alone we feel like there's nobody else going through what we're going through so what better way than to start a community because before the internet how did we do this we had to go sit and meet people in person go to an open mic or find somebody who wanted to start a meetup and that you know is not as common as today where you can you know meet on the internet and then go meet offline 
Yeah, that's interesting. And you know what? You say you're not a feminist, but you are doing a, an amazing thing, particularly for female musicians. Um, I guess, like, I'm, I'm from a very liberal area where I'm here now, so I, the idea of women being treated differently at guitar shops or anything sounds crazy to me that that even could happen. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that's... That's it, it, you know even the rock world in particular is still a very male dominated uh, the music industry in general is still a very male dominated industry you know particularly in um, I don't know, you see that certain areas kind of like the film industry too like you see casting as a female uh, fronted uh, you know aspect but th- everything else when it comes to in the film industry direction you know production everything in the music industry when it comes to the the main drivers it tends to be male and you know the second that there's a uh, we've discussed this before on the show Ross the second that yes. it's particularly in rock music or in pop music as well actually the second that there's a female um, musician or singer suddenly if they're not sexualizing themselves who's paying attention you right. know which is very very sad and very pathetic actually it's yeah. almost become the expectation uh, where it's not thought about like it happens more with men in the in pop music I think um, but it's not as expected I think. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on now with a, a band from Glasgow Churches. Um, Lauren, the lead singer, is really taking a very vocal standpoint on the way that women are treated in the music industry, um, particularly female performers, you know, because she gets a lot of um, abuse online. Um, some of the stuff she gets, it's like you would never dream of saying that to someone. Um, and like she'll be on stage and people will shout stuff like, you know, marry me, Lauren. And she'll be like, look, I'm not here for that. She's like, I'm here to perform. I'm here to sing you some songs. I'm not here for you to, you know, I, I, I'm I, more than just, you know, an object that you can have. She's like, I'm, you know, I'm a musician. I'm not just a woman wearing a dress on a stage. I'm a musician. Um, and I think, I wonder if that's maybe something that puts some females off pursuing a career that maybe they don't that's want to. That's an interesting to. point, Ross. I didn't even consider, about, consider that. Because I'm not sure if it is. It's just maybe. Yeah. Well, let's ask some, you, Madeline. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, I... I think women should do whatever they want to do. And and that, you know, if they want to go out and play music, they need to get out there and go play music. I mean, there are so many talented musicians I've come across that stop for a variety of reasons. And I think sometimes it is because of the way they're mistreated in the business. Uh, The biggest one I see is when somebody goes and has a baby and they just feel like they can't do it all and have it all. And they they leave music, which is just so sad because you, you shouldn't give it up because because of that, I mean, you know, I I adopted my son when he was uh, two years old, and I didn't let that keep me from continuing my mission of running Go Girls Music, traveling to conferences and events. Um, as he got older, he was very understanding, and he was all about it. And he was like, "Girl power," you know, so cool. Um, and I always said, you know, you're really going to appreciate growing up in this kind of environment because it's pretty darn cool. Um, but, I, you know, my message is always for women and for anybody, for all musicians, you know, get out there and do your thing, you know, it's, it's important. It's important to be heard. Yeah, I was just going to say, I have two little ones myself, and I think that it's actually important to teach them that we are people and we have to pursue our dreams and because I think that will inspire them to do the same as they grow up, you know what I mean? And that just because you have, yes. you build a family, I mean, teach their own. Some people might think that or t- it's right for them to start a family and stop what they're doing otherwise. And that, who might have judged that? Um, you know, but th- the idea that starting a family means that you have to give up your dreams is is ridiculous. That's part of my dream, you know, is, is starting a family and just other dreams. We all we all have evolving dreams over the years, right? I just wanted to point out yeah. the the I thought it was really funny, Ross, that you and I, two white men. We're discussing women's issues for like a good five minutes. <laughs> so I'm like, Madeline, wanna wanna jump in here? <laughs> hey, hey, we're, we're allowed to. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I want to hear a little bit more about your um your Twitter Smarter podcast. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and um, share some maybe your the the best tips you've received about that, and uh, particularly um, ones that musicians and creatives can use. As you know, our show is geared towards that. Sure. Well, I started the podcast because, um, well, for several reasons. One being that I'm really big with Twitter. Everybody knows I'm all about Twitter. Um, and I, I apparently rank really high. Apparently, who knew I'm such a big deal on Twitter, but it's kind of <laughs> nice. It's, it's nice to get the accolades with it. But, um, 
You know, I, I, I love podcasting. I love this format of, of, you know, sharing information. And I wanted to start something with something I enjoy. And so I, I picked Twitter. And interesting enough, there was nobody else doing any kind of Twitter specific podcast on Twitter. You got plenty of podcasts on social media. Like, you know, there's too many of them now. But nobody is just focusing on just Twitter and saying, hey, here's a podcast on Twitter tips. So it was something I wanted to do anyway. Had somebody else been already doing it, I still would have done it. It really wasn't. I don't go out. Here's, here's a real interesting thing about me. I'm an early adopter to just about everything that I do. And I don't do it with the intent of, I want to be the first. I want to be the leader. I do it because, and this is, and this is really interesting. I hope a lot of people can take away, um, take away from this, is I'm not afraid to fail. And what happened was I failed very early in business. And because of that, I have the desire to pursue the ideas I come up with. And it's okay if it doesn't work. If it works, great. And if not, move on to the next thing. And so I wanted to do this podcast. Um, I just, I set a goal. I picked a date and said, okay, June 1st of this, of this year um, is when I'm going to launch it. And so back in May, I was interviewing people like crazy Almost all of them I met through Twitter. If I didn't already know the person, then it was through Twitter where I met them. And I mean, I got, you know, all the top names, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. I got Mark Schaefer, who's written all these amazing books on social media. I just interviewed Mari Smith, who's really well known, Kim Garst, Pam Moore, all these big names in social media, getting them to share their best Twitter tips. And so A lot of musicians that know me through Go Girls have come to me and said, wow, I'm learning so much from this podcast. This is so helpful. I I really don't use Twitter. I really don't understand it. And now I'm learning new things and it's become really helpful. So that makes me incredibly happy because at the end of the day, that's what I want. I want to help people. I want to share information. And so some of the best tips, um, first and foremost for musicians and for creatives is to just get on Twitter and use it. So many people tell me um, they don't know what to do. So they just don't get on there. I mean, one of the reasons why I started this whole Twitter Smarter thing, I started it several years ago with teaching online courses, is that so many musicians at these conferences I would go to said they weren't using it. And I just didn't want them to miss out on so much opportunity that's out there if you just understand how to best use it. And so I had the Go Girls Twitter chat, and that was a great way to get musicians on there because a Twitter chat is hands down the best way to connect with people. And also, if you're new to Twitter, it's also a great way to learn. If you want to learn Twitter, you just, you know, push yourself onto it. Just take a deep breath, get on a Twitter chat, and just you, you'll learn amazing things. You'll learn how to, to best use Twitter. You'll watch what everybody else is doing. It's like a crash course, really, because you're watching what everybody else is doing. So it's, it's been really cool. So I have the Go Girls Twitter chat. I've been running that every Thursday for the last four years. And it's every Thursday. We do it twice because those of you over in Europe had been asking me for years, like, hey, can't you have one that's a little earlier? Because, you know, Ross, you used to come on our late night ones a couple of times. I, yeah, I had been a couple of times, but I think it ended up being like, what, 2 a.m. for me? Yeah, and, I was was- like, and I had to be up the next day. So, no. So, yeah, when you started the earlier one, that was great. And I met so many awesome people through that. I met, that's where I met Patrice Coakley and Stacey Sherman, who've right. been on the show. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm sure I've, I've met quite a lot of other I, I think really what it was, I, there's a lot of people that I'd already sort of briefly spoken to on Twitter. But then it was through GG chat that I really kind of got yeah. much more involved and invested in what they were doing. It's really awesome. And I would definitely say to any musicians out there, if you've not been on GG chat, jump on. It's just so rewarding to watch like people that come together from the chat. So I, you know, I came up with this idea, wasn't afraid to execute it and started it. And then Ross, you met all these cool people from it and then seeing all these things happen because of that. And that's, that's the big reward. And then with the whole Twitter smarter, same thing. It's like, I wanted to start a Twitter chat for that community because what I was doing through the podcast was building this new community of people that you know, and I, when, and when I started the podcast, I didn't know if if I didn't set the intention of building a community. I just wanted to start a podcast because we all love podcasting and you know share information. But it was building a community and people 
fell in love with it. So I thought, well, why don't I go ahead and launch the podcast to go with it? I mean, a podcast, the Twitter chat to go with the podcast. And so here the podcast started June 1st. The Twitter chat started July 30th. So it wasn't that big of a window, but I had already has so many people interested in the message and wanting to learn. So the Twitter chat from day one has just been tremendous. We're like 10 weeks in and is mind blowing right now is is great. Awesome. I got I got guests on every week, mostly from the uh, podcast and people really love it. Good. Awesome. Madeline, you ready for 20 questions? Sure. Let's do this. Coffee or tea? I neither one. I don't I'm a water drinker. That's so boring. That's okay. That's all right. I drink lots of water too. (laughs) Meat or veggies? Veggies. TV or Netflix? Oh, Netflix. This one's this one's totally redundant. But Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Yoga or yogurt? Yoga. Now I know you've seen both of these, Madeline. So, Artifact or Twenty Feet from Stardom? Oh, they're both so good. I know. Oh, that's too hard. I was they're, at the premiere of Artifact in Toronto with the band. It was, uh, it was, that it was is great. Not, it was actually, what? it was an earlier cut that ended up being released. So Really? Yeah. Every indie artist needs to watch that film. Agreed. I'll go with that one because that one is really good. I think, I think every artist should watch it. Should be required watching. Agreed. Friends or Seinfeld? Seinfeld. I've been, I've been stalking your Facebook likes for this. Shark Tank or Top Chef? Shark Tank. I love Shark Tank. I like them both, but Shark Tank, definitely. Cookies or ice cream? Oh, God. I'm going to go with ice cream. Canada or Scotland? (laughs) I love how y'all ask this in every podcast. Okay, I'm going to say Scotland because I haven't been there yet. Okay. Usually people do the opposite because they've been to Canada. (laughs) House of Cards or Orange is the New Black? Orange is the New Black. 30 Seconds to Mars or Incubus? Oh, God, I love them both. Those Incubus. Those are two of my favorite bands of all time. Just They're so, I know. so awesome. Well, you, I didn't even realize we had that in common, so you and I, I are like this yeah. now. Well, people assume I'm all about chick music, and that's all I listen to. And it's <laughs> like, okay, my dirty little secret is I love rock bands. Yeah. And you know, both, so, yeah. both lead singers are very in touch with the feminine side. Yeah, exactly. I admire and I love, exactly. and I'm, I'm with them on that. Exactly. Actually, Marcy, I want to turn this on its head and ask you, 30 Seconds to Mars or Incubus? I, it's like, I know, pick, I, but I'd probably pick Incubus. I've been okay. listening to them longer, but both yeah. both are They're, two of my favorite bands of yeah. all time. Incubus is awesome, though. I do love. I've seen. I saw them in Vegas uh, several years back. In Vegas, they played like in the parking lot of the Hard Rock Cafe. Oh, really? They took the parking lot and set it up into like a stadium. It was badass. That's awesome. With like bleachers and everything in the parking lot. The Voice or American Idol. Oh, I don't like either one. If I had to pick one, I'll pick The Voice. Beastie Boys or Rage Against the Machine? Rage Against the Machine. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. Are y'all like waiting for somebody to say Michael Bolton? Really? (laughs) A few people have said Michael Bolton. One in in 30. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe 125. So so two people. (laughs) Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Uh, Celine Dion. You surprised me. I thought you would be the Marilyn Manson. <laughs> you know, I had enough of Marilyn Manson. I had enough to last me a lifetime. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Gervais or Ricky Martin? Uh, Ricky Gervais. Whale or kale? So what is the purpose of this one? Whale or kale? Like, <laughs> well, like what, is, what exactly do you mean? Like eating? Because I'm not going to eat a whale. I love whales. I want to save the whales. We don't really know. Um, like if it's a lo- if it's a what's, love what's thing, the point of this like- show in general really russ <laughs> <laughs> i love whales and dolphins and i want to save the whales and dolphins so okay, then the whales if, if that answer. if that's an appropriate but, but kale is something you eat so yes. i thought well if this is about what you eat who eats whale anyway it's not i guess people anything. do russ i think yeah, you should start, Iceland, we should start adding more questions that are confusing like that because it's fun to see our guests be like huh <laughs> i know i'm like huh <laughs> bet midler or the riddler bet midler and our final question, and bear in mind, we've known each other a while. Madeline. Bear in mind that you've already picked Scotland. <laughs> Ross or Marcio? Oh, you'll make this so hard. You know what? I know that those that normally on your show that, that pick 
Scotland, say Ross. Since I already said Scotland, I'm going to say Marcia. Thank you. It's actually, it's, that's actually usually what you do. People usually pick one. Well, I picked Canada already, so I'll pick yeah, Ross. I'm like, I'm not Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. And you know what? That's even more hurtful to Ross because he's actually known you. I'm yeah, just I know. Really out. So I like that even more that it's hurting Ross that much more. Right and he's done work for me. So I know, you know, I know and yet you still pick Marcia. You talked to me for twenty something minutes, and that you well, me. I like getting, you, Madeline. I don't, I like I don't really know Marcia that well. I'm getting to know him, and and so it's a good thing. That's why you picked me because you don't know me that well. <laughs> Once you do, you won't. I might, I might switch back. Maybe. Most likely, I pretty much guarantee it. So, <laughs> Y'all are so, funny. Madeline, I want to know uh, three most beneficial reasons why an artist or musician uh, should be using Twitter. Okay. Um, number one, they should be using Twitter because it's a great place to meet people that can help you in your music career. You know, people don't necessarily see that, but if they just get on there and start using it, there's, you know, I teach this in my courses, but you can just come on my Twitter chat, you can listen to my podcast, and you will learn ways of how to do this um, because it's a great way to meet people you would not meet on Facebook, that you would not meet on LinkedIn because, you know, as you know, Facebook is all about personal friends and family if you don't know somebody then it's like a creepy factor right like you know i don't know this person i'm not gonna let them in but on twitter you can do this so i have connected um you know if we want to think of some big people like um amanda palmer Amanda Palmer with her 1 million followers, we've talked about her on the Twitter chat so much. And then people, and then this will be number two, people make the mistake of not tagging. So we'll be on the Twitter chat and, and somebody will say, you know, we'll talk about who are our heroes. And of course, Amanda Palmer comes up every single time. Nobody tags her. So this ties into number two tag people you're talking about. So during the Twitter chat, I will take somebody's tweet when they're talking about Amanda, reply, hit the reply button and tag Amanda. So she's part of the conversation. Now, one time we did that so many times that she, she came over and she goes, what the hell is this GG chat? What is this? And I was like, Yay! We got her attention. Exactly. It worked. It totally worked. And what happened was, here she has a million followers, right? She only follows like 800 Twitter profiles. She ended up following the Go Girls Twitter that day. Nice. And so that shows you the power of Twitter right there through the Twitter chat, how we got her attention and now she's following the Go Girls Twitter. Um, number three would be... Um, to um, be consistent with your posting. That's another thing that a lot of people are not doing, especially musicians. You know, this goes all the way back to the MySpace days. I remember the MySpace days, musicians would be like, oh, well, when I get really busy, I can't post. When we're touring or we're recording or we're doing this, we're doing that. Same thing with Twitter, same thing with all of our social media today. Make the time, make a plan. If you can't do it, get somebody else in your band to do it. Consistency is the key. When somebody comes over your Twitter, and it hasn't been, you know, nothing's been on there for days or weeks. Nobody's going to take you seriously. They're going to pass you by and they're done with you. So post very, very consistently. But don't overpost. Don't overpost. Quality over quantity, I believe. I mean, maybe it works for different people. I think for a musician, quality over quantity. Yeah, but yeah. I agree. Quality for sure. And don't like just push, push, push. You know, it's also about listening yeah. and, and communicating what to, what to me musicians do is like, come to my show, buy my CD, do no. this, do that. No. And it's just this push, push, push. They need to listen to conversations. That's why Twitter chats are great because they can meet new people, jump into conversations, have good quality conversations, meet good quality people. And that's, that's so important. I agree. Now, I think everyone should go follow you on Twitter and Facebook and go to I your website. I think they should too. They're, it's all Madeline Sklar. Everything, that's, you know, the beauty of right. having an unusual name. Um, no one's is, got it. Exactly. I'm the only one in the world. Awesome. Thank uh, you. So everyone should go check her out. And as for me, I'm currently writing for my next solo album. And I just released my side project, Midnight Soundtracks, debut album, Foreplay. You can hear my music at marcionovelli.com. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, which are all slash marcionovelli. Again, the beauty of having an unusual name. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm working on websites for various artists just now. You can check out my work and blog posts at electrickiwi.co.uk, which is also an unusual name. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at electrickiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. 
This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton Presents. Find out more about what Chris does and how he can help you at chriskeaton.com. And if you'd like to sponsor the show, visit bridge-the-atlantic.com slash sponsors. Madeline, this has been so awesome. You are, you you rock. Thank you, Marcio Ross. Thank you guys both for inviting me. I'm really honored and this has been so much fun. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Click on the videos above us if you'd like to see more. And please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome, and we'll see you on next week's episode. 